Hi everyone. So, welcome to the class. So, in the last lecture we were discussing about what is uh, marketing research and how marketing research in the B2B is different from the B2C, right. So, the B2B market because of its you know specific characteristics like its complexity, its you know concentrated in a few uh, locations or very few buyers being there and all. So, and technologically or technically more sound uh, you know the people in the B2B market. So, all these characteristics makes B2B marketing research little more uh, special and uh, we need to understand what kind of techniques would be uh, more valuable or more useful in the B2B marketing research uh, when you look at otherwise on the B2C part, right. So, in the last uh, lecture we also said about how B2B marketing research applications are helpful when we talked about marketing intelligence system and uh, marketing research. So, and today we will be talking about the various research methods that are used in the B2B market research, right. So, all it is not that these methods are not used elsewhere, but in the B2B space they have uh, wide application, okay. So, some of the research methods that is used in the B2B marketing uh, uh, research are like focus group interviews, in depth interviews, survey methods, sentiment analysis and text analysis, right which is a part of social media which is called a social media listening right or social media analytics, experimentation, netnography, case method and action research. So, we will look at each of these methods uh, uh, in more in depth and we will understand how they are useful and why they are specifically useful for this uh, uh, kind of research ok. So, let us start with this focus group interviews. Now, focus group interviews uh, is basically is a uh, interview method which is conducted by a group of you know a trained uh, moderator. So, there is a moderator who moderates the uh, you know interview process and the a few number of uh, people uh, are selected. So, generally in a offline setup for example, there are 8 to 10 people uh, who participate in the focus group interviews and it is a non-structured and natural manner. Uh, you know process that happens. What is the purpose? The purpose of the focus group is to gain insights by listening to the group of people what they talk and how they talk about certain issues which is of interest to the researcher. Nowadays uh, focus group interviews are done online as well and online it is more advantageous sometimes because the group size can increase and more people can participate. So, focus group interviews uh, if you see has been very very helpful to understand the key concepts, key requirements. For example, let us say uh, a, a marketer, I have an example, let us talk straight away with an example, a software development company, right, it developed an, a developed an accounting software specifically designed for the small shop owners. So, the small shop owners for them this software company designed a accounting software. But in no time they got a very poor marketing response, right. The company decided to conduct a focus group interview. So, the, the company realized the sales is not happening. So, they thought nothing is wrong about the product and we also know that there is a need uh, of this product from the shops in the small shop owners, but still they are not buying it. Why is that? Why are they are not purchasing the service? So, they conducted a focus group interview with some members of its sales team to understand the underlying problem. So, when you do such a focus group, a few of the sales team members and the few of the mall shop owners who are direct users of this product, they are uh, invited for a discussion, ok. The researchers, uh, you know, after conducting this focus group interview, this focus group interview is generally conducted in a very uh, in an informal manner for about 45 minutes to 1 hour and sometimes they are recorded also, right, with permission. The researchers found that the small shop owners preferred a mobile application for accounting as it was more convenient as compared to a PC or laptop because you know there might be space constraint, there might be different kind of maybe a cost of a laptop or maintenance is more difficult. So, people preferred that the or the small shop owners they preferred a accounting software which could be over their mobile, right. So, the company started working on developing an accounting application for the mobile phones. So, now this 
only can come out with proper discussion or proper you know uh, understanding of the customer requirements. So, focus group interviews basically is a method where people you know they sit and they discuss among themselves and there is a moderator right the moderator and he the moderator moderates the relationship. So, what it does is basically he would try to get insights from all the people all the participants. So, these are the participants let us say. So, uh, all the participants they would try to ask certain questions, they would try to take certain uh, opinions and they would try to ask them okay, what is happening, why they are not using the product and in case they are using the product what kind of problems they are facing. So, by asking such questions many a times what happens you know the moderator also plays a dual role in the sense that sometimes some participants would not be very much what you say they might not be uh, conversant or they might not be able to speak well right. So, here the moderator plays a vital role in trying to encourage the participant to speak something and to come out with some kind of a uh, solution or some kind of a suggestion ok. So, by doing this you know the inherent problem the root problem of the, uh, of the or the root issue is unearthed or found out and then accordingly this information is passed to the companies. One such very popular focus group interviews was done by some detergent company which wanted to find out why detergents are not what do people look in when they buy detergents ok. And interestingly after many uh, rounds of interviews they found that people do not although price, fragrance and all these things are very important right price, fragrance, the color you know the size of the package everything. But one thing that was very important from which came out out of the focus group was that people understood that the quality of a product of a detergent was good or bad on basis of the kind of uh, you know a color of the discharged water. Now, these kind of informations you do not get right for by just uh, interacting directly to a client. So, a focus group is very helpful in this manner. The second is Delphi method. Now, Delphi method is a process used to arrive at a group opinion or decision by surveying a panel of experts. So, this is like an expert opinion right survey. So, this is done in certain cases where the subject or the you know the topic of discussion is little difficult to understand or everybody might not have an idea about the subject. Now, for example, now let us say somebody wants to know what would be the future you know future demand in the future what would be the demand of let us say uh, coal or what would be the future demand of electrical vehicles. Now, to, to give an opinion about such a subject maybe everybody is not uh, you know in a position to do that. So, or let us say you want to know about let us say uh, on something on shipping or maritime or let us say some space or astronomy. So, there are certain topics on which everybody is not well versed. So, Delphi method is a process which is used to arrive at a group opinion or decision by surveying some experts in that area right. So, if I ask somebody you know what would be the kind of business that India would do after certain years in space and space related products. So, many of us will not be in a position to answer that. So, Delphi method becomes a very powerful method. So, experts respond to the several rounds of questionnaires and the responses are aggregated and shared with the group after each round. So, what it what is done is basically I think we have done it earlier also. So, first the information is collected from everyone and it is aggregated and then that is sent to all the participants and then they are asked to make any changes if they want to right. So, then the second round of collection is done and again aggregation is done and then again uh, some kind of interpretation is made out, out, out of it. And till you know a unanimous decision is comes to a kind of unanimity, this round goes on and on and on, right. Delphi has been widely used for business forecasting and especially of those products which are very difficult to, uh, to predict uh, you know their demand. A startup developed AI artificial intelligence bots, right. Now, chatbots and all you must have heard of that can help clients in multiple ways like product walkthroughs interactive marketing, corporate training etcetera. Now, you must be knowing that uh, nowadays uh, it is very costly to get people and it is very difficult to retain people. So, many uh, organizations uh, for such uh, jobs which are more routine in nature they are trying to create depend on those bots ok. 
Now, what about how how uh, you know uh, good it would it, would it be if they can create a human bot, let's say, which would look exactly like a human being and talk in your own language, maybe. The bot has the potential to uh, speak in, uh, let's say, 50 languages or 100 languages, and whatever language you prefer, it will talk to you in that language. Now, by doing this, what happens? It becomes very uh, easy for us to understand. Before commercializing the product, the founders of the startup invited relevant experts to participate and predict the acceptance and success of the product so that adjustments can be made and appropriate funds can be allotted for marketing, right? So, this for this kind of study subjects, you see not everyone can participate, right. So, Delphi method is a very powerful method. The third research method is in-depth interviews or depth interviews we say. Now, interviewing has always been a you know part and partial, right. So, we have gone for walk-in interviews, job interviews, you know uh, some kind of a interviews in the educational institutes, all kinds of interviews. So, what is the purpose of interview? It is an unstructured, direct, personal interview in which a single respondent is probed by a highly skilled interviewer or interviewers to uncover some underlying motivations, belief, attitude and feelings on a topic. Now, we conduct interviews to know about how people feel about let us say the government's functioning right, or government's attitude or government's policies on let us say development, on infrastructural development. Now, we want to know what is what is people's opinion, right? In-depth interviews are great when they when expert advice is needed or when discussing highly complex topics as you have in the B2B markets. So, in the B2B markets, if you just throw a survey form, right, and you ask people, it might not work so well, although that is also a part of the research method process, but it might not work so well, right? But if you take an in-depth interview or you do a focus group right, or you do a uh, kind of a Delphi approach, it is more uh, realistic, more powerful because you can hear a quality interview or a, you know a, a good intense interview is more important than collecting 50 or 100 data from which are irrelevant or less important. right? So, maybe I talk to the production manager of a firm and may have, have an one hour interview about how they purchase, what they purchase, what do they look in when they purchase something, you know. That in-depth interview will be more helpful for a uh, research, uh, for a marketing research uh, for another B2B firm. So, that is why in-depth interviews are very powerful. It is a great when expert advice is needed, right. And they can be conducted in various modes like telephone, video conference, face to face, physically you can do it, telephonically, internet on the internet you can do. So, there are many ways. Okay. Now, let us look at an example. A group of researchers wanted to explore the importance of branding in the business markets, right. So, generally you must have heard like whether to brand or not in the business market because branding is generally associated with you know consumer goods, right, because consumers are uh, very brand conscious, they would like to buy a product on basis of the brand name and all. But since uh, this market is a more rational market, business market is a more rational market, so is branding even required or not? That is generally a discussion that happens. The dominant perspective of an organizational buying behavior suggests that buyers tend to rely on objective criteria like price, you know, uh, flexibility, you know, cost of operation, uh, you know, time of uh, delivery and all these things, right when making a product choice decision and that the influence of subjective cues such as brands or goodwill on buyer decision making decreases, right, decreases with uh, increasing uh, risk. But however, a research was conducted and in-depth interview was done and where managers found that the risk and importance of branding is actually directly related, it is not inverse. So, the importance of branding was highest in relatively high risk situations. So, what happened? What was found was that in a case where the risk of the product, let us say the product would fail, then it is a very high risky situation, the loss would be very high for the company, that kind of a situation. So, they found that it was better to go with the branded product because that branded product maybe was little costly or anything, but that provided that extra cushion or of extra trust. Okay. So, uh, this was something that was found during the interviews, right. 
many such uh, insights have been found through from interviews by you know by conducting in the different business market situation the next method is the uh, most uh, liked method but maybe it is not so rampant in the uh, business research uh, uh, b2b markets is a survey method now this is a method of obtaining information in which a questionnaire is given to a sample of uh, people right a, of a population which is designed to bring out the information from the respondents this is a good method no doubt about it most used method but it's a very it can be questionable in the b2b market because here we already you know the people we have discussed that the people who are participants are from a different position and they might not have time to read your questionnaires and they might not be even willing to participate in such a situation so sometimes they don't prefer those methods but still in some cases we can go for it right we can go for it it depends on how effectively we can design the survey instrument okay now let's look at this company's case a office manufacturing you know a office furniture manufacturing company sent its sales team with a questionnaire that was to be filled by maximum possible members of the decision making units of its customers now office furniture most of the companies who were setting up or want had a requirement uh, from you know of chairs tables and all those office furnitures so the the sales team went with a questionnaire and met with the customer uh, you know clients and asked the members who were in the decision making unit that means the joint decision making unit so to participate in the filling of the questionnaire the goal was to assess its customer satisfaction and experience through its pro, through the purchase cycle the company found that the user rated the product favorably but the buyers were not satisfied with the order placement process now what happened so in the buying process we said that there is a user and there is somebody who is the actual buyer right or the decider and the buyer right now they found that the users rated the product favorably so the user were very happy with the product right but the buyers were not happy why because the placement process or uh, you know the the way the product was placed the order was placed that was not very uh, easy it was more cumbersome so they didn't like it right the company started working on making its order placement process smoother and more convenient for the buyer the same thing you can see for example when you talk about let's say the income tax right uh, payment process so people uh, it's not that people don't want don't want to pay income tax but the problem is with the kind of the difficulty in filling up the income tax form and all it is sometimes so cumbersome that even an educated person right feels difficult right and uh, no wonder that a person who is less educated or doesn't understand uh, does cannot read well he will find it next to impossible or very difficult to fill that the so same thing has applied here the next important thing that uh, is nowadays is uh, has become very important is uh, which is uh, you know connected to social media listening now social media listening is which is you know we say now it has become very important because most of the people today if you go to any place you know people would be always on their mobile phones even they would be maybe somebody across a home or house two people are talking to the, each other on a mobile phone that is the kind of situation we are in so the use of social media the use of uh, mobile services has become so rampant and so much that people are finding less time to talk to each other but anyway that's a uh, different story so what i'm trying to hint out here is social media has become a very important platform where people discuss right and therefore understanding social media or listening to the discussions in the social media is very important for companies and corporates okay so sentiment analysis is a part of that now what does sentiment analysis say it refers to as opinion mining uh, which is an approach to the uh, natural language processing nlp that identifies emotional tones okay for example somebody is happy somebody is uh, unhappy with a product or service <coughs> uh, or somebody has a neutral view point so all this kind of sentiment that is going on right one can find out by looking at the kind of words being used by the kind of sentences being used and this gives a very very deep insight about the way people are thinking about a product this is a popular way for business to determine 
and categorize opinions about a product, service or idea, right. So, sentimental analysis has become a very powerful tool and similarly you have another which is called text analysis. Now, text analysis is the process of analyzing unstructured text. Now, you, you write something in a Twitter, right, account, you write something on the Facebook or LinkedIn or somewhere, right. So, this data that you write has certain meaning. Extracting this data and extracting the relevant information and transforming it into useful business intelligence is the job of text analysis, right. It shows what is being written about most, which ideas are commonly linked in the text and even determine who is bringing up which uh, in which subjects the most. So, the point is who is the main person in the discussion, what they are discussing and what is the different, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, from the text you can re understand that maybe everybody is pointing out as a particular point or, point or particular thing which is very important for them, right. So, looking at this unstructured text and trying to extract certain information is a very, very, very powerful thing as of today because social media discussions are more honest and they are, they are, this comes straight from the heart mostly. So, that is why whatever you see or read there, it is more or less accurate, right. So, text analysis has become a very important tool in this way. So, let us look at this uh, example of this company which uses uh, for which sentiment analysis and text analysis can be useful. So, a logistics company can use sentiment analysis and text analysis right to compare its service quality with its competitors. Now, by analyzing the comments on its own website and its competitors website. So, people there is a website of the company. So, the people are writing giving their feedbacks right. So, looking at those feedbacks, it can understand what is the sentiment uh, they are having, the customers are having towards them and their competitors. And it, it can even get to know about the dimensions on which it is performing well and the dimensions on which it is not performing well, right. So, text analysis may show the terms like delivery time, price, handling issues, you know, which have been repeated the most and sentiment analysis may show them, you know, delivery time which has been used in a positive context or some terms which are being used for in a positive note, right. So, the customer is happy with that, maybe the customer is happy with the kind of delivery, with the kind of the service that is being offered, but the customer is not happy with the price, the customer is not happy with the kind of the placement process of the orders and all. So, in some context they are happy, some they are not. So, these things can be easily understood by using a sentiment analysis and text analysis, right. And nowadays companies, almost all companies, they demand for data scientists and all just because they need to understand how to extract data from those social media and to conduct a sentiment analysis because then that will give them very clear insights on which uh, you know features on which uh, items they should uh, allocate resources, work more harder and try to develop their products and in which areas they can cut down some of the resources. The next thing is experimentation. Uh, now, experimentation is a little difficult in the B2B market, but still it has its own importance. It is formed when the researcher manipulates one or more independent variables and measures their effect, right. So, what happens? There is one a control group. So, in this case, this is the control group, right, and there is a you know experimental group. So, A is the control group, B is the experimental group, okay. So, for example, companies can have a can conduct an A-B testing, which is a very famous for you know uh, term which is used A-B testing. A refers to control or the original testing variable, whereas B refers to the variation or a new version. Now, by look giving both options to the let us say uh, for example, in a website what do look people look in or let us say Amazon wants to find out how do what uh, which of the uh, things is people are more in demand or what they want to see, which color they like, which kind of design they want. Now, an A-B testing is very helpful to give them such suggestions, okay. There is another method called split URL test. Here what is done is the website traffic is split between the control and the uh, experimental group, right. And then each of their respective conversion rates. So, how many people who went to the control group and uh, out of them how many, what percentage actually finally purchased the product and what percentage of people who went to the experimental group, experimental uh, 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 URL, how many of them uh, purchased the product. That is that difference is measured to decide 
which is the winner right whether the you know the control uh, group uh, is the or the original web page uh, url is the winner or the new web page url is the winner right so these kind of experimentations are always done then is set something called netnography now netnography is a kind of uh, uh, you can say is a uh, is a club is clubbing two words here net and ethnography right specific type of qualitative research that adapts the methods of ethnography now you must be knowing what is ethnography ethnography is a method of where we observe we observe the behavior the the kind of habits of people right to understand interaction happening in the online context so the term ethnography is made by combining internet or network and ethnography okay so a hotel aggregator like oyo oyo is a very uh, known uh, uh, hotel aggregator in india wants to board more hotels on its platform right to understand its customers better the company observed the conversations right happening online in the among the online communities of various regional hotel associations and identified that the identified the thought leaders in each community now thought leaders may be the influencers basically right who can influence the decision the company after identifying those influences what they did was they targeted these leaders who after becoming customers influenced others to become their customers as well now these kind of uh, observation sometimes you know observations are very powerful tools uh, in any kind of research right and even today observations on the internet or observations on the website is becoming a very powerful tool right so this uh, can help companies to change their policies to change their product designs prices everything the next method is the case method now case is a detailed study of a specific subject such as person group place event anything organization so we use case studies for you know for a simulation kind of exercise in the classroom also so where we try to uh, educate students to understand more about how companies function how the accounts uh, works what is the marketing functions right how everything functions so the students run into the case they try to understand give their opinion suggestions and all so case study is an appropriate research design when a researcher wants to gain concrete contextual in depth knowledge about a real world subject so you can't always go and uh, you know see something in the world so it's like a simulated environment where you uh, where you talk about a case which has already happened or it is maybe a kind of a simulated one fictitious case maybe but it's simulated for that uh, purpose so that a person can feel that he is in that situation and understand what kind of decisions have to be taken so it allows a researcher to explore the key characteristics meanings and implications of the case let's say a company dealing in web development wishes to enter foreign markets now before that the market manager the marketing managers thoroughly studied the cases of companies that deal in the same or related products and that tried to enter the foreign market right it also studied the particular country it wants to enter to understand its culture and the way business is done lastly it also looked at its competitors that are already doing business in those markets to get a better understanding so case method is a method which gives you a very near to real life uh, event kind of a situation and it helps you to think analyze and interpret your decisions in such situation in such cases if you ever uh, are in right so it is not real but it is very close to the real life situation okay the final is action research now action research is a methodology of research that seeks transformative change through the simultaneous process of taking action and doing research now let's forget that the, what simply it means is that action research is where one where you identify the action and try to take necessary you know steps right then evaluate those steps and adopt or reject and then this process goes on and on till you uh, you know reach to a very best position or optimized situation right so what is action research action research is a it says that it helps to transform it has seeks transformative change through a continuous process of taking action and doing research and making changes and then evaluating and again Uh, uh adopting or rejecting or if you are uh, you know accepting it then fine if you are rejecting again try to uh, create new actions or identify new actions 
So, this process goes on and on and on until unless you are in a very positive or good situation. Let us say at the beginning a company may not know how to use social media to its benefit. Many companies today they are learning, they are in the process of using ERP, you know so software tools like SAP and all. So, uh, or even how to use social media data they do not know. So, the marketing team may begin by making a plan and implementing that, then it may learn from it and make changes to its initial plan and then implement the updated plan. So, this cycle goes on and on till the company gets all the desired information. So, what is happening here? So, you are using the social media, so you are trying to unearth the data, so you are trying to uh, you know make a kind of a uh, you know be a part of that you know uh, community or something and then try to participate there, try to get collect data and take a, a corrective actions and then see whether the products are being whatever you have learned from the social media, the data by after developing uh, with the help of the data whatever you have developed finally, is that being of any use uh, to uh, you or not, whether the product is being accepted in the market or not. And if it is accepted then fine, if it is not accepted again you start take some more corrective actions by looking at the you know data from the social media again you try to evaluate and then you try to uh, uh, go through this procedure entirely. So, by this what happens is a continuous process of uh, you know thinking, planning, acting and taking action all this is going on and on till you reach to a very desirable goal. Okay. So, these are some of the you know research methods that we talked about and they are critically important, they are very important because uh, uh, not all will be successful in the business market. So, I did not talk about uh, statistical tools and techniques obviously because here uh, these methods are more important because this is the way you can uh, you know, reach the uh, respondent and try to unearth the information. So, you may go through an ethnographic manner, you can go through a as I said netnography which is a combination or you can go for a case method and action research method or you can just go for a kind some kind of experiments right as I showed you or you can go for you know uh, some kind of let us say focus group. So, these are several methods that are possible in your hand and you have it and the one which you feel is most closest to you in terms of the way you know how much time you have, how much of resources you have. On basis of all these measures you can decide which is the best tool that I can use and uh, can get the best information. So, that would help me in my decision making process. So, basically marketing research helps you to take decisions, helps you in the decision making process uh, and in case you need to understand more about marketing research, I have my NPTEL videos on marketing research which I have done for you know some time back. So, you can go through that there are almost all these techniques have been discussed in detail. So, this is only one part of the B2B. So, I just have touched upon it, but if you want to learn deep about it, you can go through my NPTEL videos on marketing research, right. So, with this I like to wind up this unit and uh, till then uh, we will meet in the next lecture. So, till then take care and thank you very much.